This video is sponsored by Zenpop. I don't know about you guys, but whenever it comes to my creative pursuits, I really tend to gravitate towards the most chaotic processes possible. Is there a loud machine or a power tool involved? Do I get to use sharp objects? If the answer is yes to those questions, well baby, you know I've gotta try it. But there is a category of chaos that I've been seeing on the internet lately that I haven't quite gotten under my belt yet. Chemicals. More specifically, bleach. I love this brand because it's totally awesome bleach. Look at that. Recently, Instagram has been feeding me non-stop videos of people painting on their clothing with bleach and it looks absolutely incredible. I mean, are you seeing this? Of course I've got to try it. But first, we need some stuff that I can actually slather in bleach. Which of course means it's time for a thrift store trip. At the thrift store, I was looking for t-shirts, denim jackets, or hoodies and natural fibers like cotton because synthetic fibers don't react well with bleach. And after testing some options, I ended up buying a couple of cute items I thought would work well for my purposes. The key word there is thought. So to catch you up on where we are now after our little first thrifting excursion, uh, first of all, I thrifted this denim jacket and I was gonna paint on it, but it it's too cute, I'm keeping it this way. The other things I thrifted were a little black crop top and then an olive green crop top, and they both said that they were at least 50% cotton or so, which I was hoping would be enough to be able to bleach a design on them. So the first thing I did was a little bleach test on both of them, and it was a little bit disappointing because as I suspected, they both did lift. There's definitely some cotton fibers in there, but you can tell that the other fibers are really fighting against it, and I just don't think they lifted enough to give me a satisfying design in the end. I don't want to attempt to bleach them anyways and then just ruin the entire shirt because I will wear them as they already are or I'll paint them or I'll embroider something on them. Basically no harm no foul. So this morning I rushed out in a panic and purchased the cheapest fabric softener I could find in case I want to just be chaotic and paint on some of the stuff that I got. I do own fabric medium somewhere but it's in the abyss somewhere I can't find it. But the other thing I did was go to my favorite little hole in the wall thrift store that is literally within walking distance of my house to see what I could find there. And my dudes, your girl struck gold. I ended up finding some really cute items. I didn't purchase all of them because I'm really trying to heap this to only things that I know I'll actually wear. But I ended up making out of there like a bandit because the thrift store owner gave everything that I bought to me for literally a dollar a dollar in this economy. And he was so sweet that he also threw in three of his homegrown squashes for free. I mean, does a better deal even exist? The moral of the story here is I highly recommend going to your local mom and pop thrift stores because you tend to get the best deals there. And then you might even also get some produce. What could possibly be better? So we're in much better shape here because several of the pieces that I'm working with are 100% cotton, so they should actually react well with the bleach. So let's take a look at our contenders for today. Out of this giant pile of clothing, we have this cute little black button-up. This very oversized blue denim button-up. This green denim cropped jacket. Not cotton, but the back is just asking to be painted on. And this little cap sleeve t-shirt. Also for my personal collection, this little black tank top. A brown button-up mini skirt that doesn't quite fit me anymore and a black mini skirt I cropped myself years ago that is just begging for an update. Unfortunately, not everything reacted super well to my bleach test. Some of that is to be expected. But that's the reason why I bought fabric softener because I also think that some of these pieces would just look better if I put some paint on them. So I think now I need to figure out what I am going to even paint onto these. Um, do you think that you could maybe like scoot over a little bit? We have to do some clothing design. You. There's two batches that I had time for here. In the first batch, I have an eyeball shirt, literally just a shirt covered in little spooky eyeballs. I think it's just a fun motif to have for a button-up shirt. I also wanted to take the black tank top and skirt and turn them into a matching flame theme set. I feel like this would be very Riot era, let the flames begin paramore vibes. So that's my ulterior motive for this design. In the second set on the black tee, I wanted to do a foresty Luna Moth design inspired by these. A celestial sun and moon motif on the brown skirt. And I thought about a 
attempting a little mushroom design on the olive tea, but I decided embroidery may be a better fit for that another time. So with that, let's break out some bleach. But before we get too deep into this, my fellow goblins, as you know, I am a sketchbook rat. Which is why I'm very excited to be working with this video sponsor, Zenpop. So let me ask you something, anime fans. Did you know that Japan has some of the best quality, most aesthetically pleasing stationery and art supplies you can get your paint stained little mitts on? Zenpop offers monthly subscription boxes with new boxes and new themes every single month. You can receive original stationery items from Japan in a Zenpop stationery box, including high quality pens, pencil, and or highlighters, unique stickers for any occasion, beautiful stylized washi tape, sticky notes, memo pads and or letter sets, and new and novel items that you never knew you needed until they showed up in your box. This is my new favorite pen! May 2023's theme is Golden Glitter. Get ready to make your spring creations shine like gold with our Golden Glitter stationery box straight from Japan. This box is not just any ordinary stationery kit, it's packed with the most dazzling, sparkly, and glittery supplies you could ever dream of. From pens to shimmering washi tape, our Golden Glitter box has everything you need to add a touch of glamour to your bullet journal, scrapbooks, collages, and more. Am I insinuating you could just put the stickers on yourself? <laughs> Maybe. I was very excited to receive this box because honestly, my sketchbook has been feeling a little dull lately and I think this is exactly what I need to zhuzh it up a little bit. These original stationery items from Japan are a limited edition, high quality, and Japan exclusive, so you can't get them just anywhere. And a monthly subscription means you'll get a new box with a new theme every single month, perfect for goblins who are easily enthralled by shiny things, like me. Also, if stationery doesn't do it for you, Zenpop also has a bunch of other monthly subscription boxes to choose from, so if you'd rather eat snacks than draw in a sketchbook, they have something for you as well. So if you want to receive high quality stationery, scrapbooking, and novel items you never knew you needed, check out Zenpop using my link in the description, and if you sign up for a box, you can use my code PRICKLYALPACA at checkout for a $10 discount. And when you Americans sign up, they also have free shipping to the USA. I am also hosting a stationery box giveaway in partnership with Zenpop, where we'll be giving away a stationery box to the first 500 people who sign up. It won't be the May Golden Glitter box, it'll have a new theme, but similar items, so consider this a surprise box, but to enter, all you have to do is number one, create a free Zenpop account, and number two, provide your Zenpop email and the Google form linked below to enter you into the giveaway. The giveaway is first come, first serve, so if you've won a box, you'll receive an email from Zenpop letting you know where you can enter your shipping information. This is an international giveaway, there is no purchase necessary to enter, void where prohibited, and there is no age limit, but if you're under the age of 18, I highly recommend asking a parent or guardian to help you enter if possible. All the links and giveaway information are in the description down below. I hope you get a box. So I think the first one that I'm gonna work on is the eyeball blouse, just because I think this is gonna be the simplest process and it's probably the one I'm most excited about right now. I think I'm gonna start out by doing the design on this with chalk, do the bleach step, and then if I think it needs it, which I it very well might, I think I might also paint some accent colors on top of the bleach. I'm very excited for this. I've needed more shirts that I can just like wear over little tank tops like this so I don't get sunburned as easily. I mean. I got a little bit on me from yesterday. I think the little bleach swatch on this one is promising, so let's hope this works. Hello, it's the next day. So I think the eyeball shirt is coming along pretty well. I do think that it could maybe use another pass with the bleach just because, you know, it didn't end up being as light of a color as I would have liked. This is not 100% cotton, so you will have some areas in there where it's a little darker, and then whenever I really piled up the bleach or did a second pass, it definitely got lighter. So before I attempt to do another pass on this, I'm gonna rinse it out just to get all of the excess dye out and let it chill. And I don't have a ton of time this week, so I'm gonna kind of do the whole good, better, best method. If I have an opportunity to go back and 
put more bleach on this, I will. But if not, I think I'm gonna just touch this up a little bit in the painting phase and add some goodies just to make it like pop a little bit more. Uh, Cause right now she is looking very much homemade, home done, which isn't bad, but you know, I, I think it could use a little bit more work. So next I'm going to be working on the flame set, which I am also extremely excited about. I'm really hoping that both of these pieces take bleach a little bit better than the other one. I think these are both actually 100% cotton where that one did have like more of a 97% cotton thing going on. I'm hoping that with my technique for these, I can kind of do a gradient. For my design, I'll have like one level of bleach, another level, and then the lightest level to kind of create that anime style flame effect that I'm going for. And also if I have time, I hope I'm gonna have time, this is also going to be a little bit of a thrift flip because this tank top is shapeless and formless and just too long. So I think I'm gonna cut it, crop it, and I'm actually able to do that because your girl finally bought a new sewing machine, everybody. Just let me pause for effect. I know that, that took freaking forever. Let's get going. Point, you can probably tell that the fire set is not quite going according to plan. I made the dumb mistake of like not really testing either of these pieces before going into the bleaching process and I really thought that they were going to lift a little bit better than some of the other pieces that I had to work with. Unfortunately that was not the case. The tank top did end up lifting a good bit but it didn't get quite to that like brightest level of bleaching that I wanted it to get to and the skirt on the other hand just was a disaster. The bleaching is uneven. It didn't take it well at all. It's supposed to be 100% cotton, but it's more of like a khaki texture, so maybe that has something to do with it. I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't really do a ton of research going into this. I'm sure that there's reasons why the particular pieces of clothing that I'm using in this video didn't bleach as well as others, but I don't know those reasons. So the design I had in mind was supposed to be a very graphic style, and it was also supposed to sort of go in layers, because I've seen some people be able to sort of bleach to one level and then layer it up and then gradually get to that brightest level which I was hoping would give me more of that like fire gradient design. It of course didn't do that. It all lightened to the same level immediately. So I'm now going to go in the direction that this video was inevitably going to go in and I'm gonna break out the paint and the fabric softener and do things the way you're not supposed to do them. You know it's kind of disappointing that I ended up with items from the thrift store that didn't take bleach particularly well even though most of them are 100% cotton, but that's just kind of the way it is whenever you thrift items, you don't really know like how it's gonna go. Obviously, if you're going to do this, the ideal item is just a full on normal cotton t-shirt. But I wanted items that were a little bit more interesting than that for this because I don't typically wear just normal standard cotton t-shirts that often besides like a little baby shirt, which I did get some of and they didn't work. This is what we do in my videos. We make mistakes, adapt, and then usually fail forwards into success. I hope that that happens the same way now, but either way, you're along for the adventure. So let's put some paint where it doesn't belong. <laughs> I was hoping because I did pre-lighten the fabric, it would take the paint a little bit better. That was more or less the case with the tank top, but it was certainly not the case with the skirt. Like it just, it barely lightened at all. So whatever I was putting it on, it was just looking muddy red. It was not really selling as flames. It was also really streaky and chalky. Like you could tell there was paint in the fabric and I was like, oh no, maybe this isn't gonna work out. I don't know, Kira, what? makes you think it would. So I was like, all right, we're gonna table this for just a second so I can figure out what I'm doing and maybe not try to ruin this. So I washed it out just because I know in the past whenever I've used a lot of moisture with acrylic paint and fabric softener, it normally like distributes the pigment a little bit better. It turns out like, okay. So I let it dry and like I said, it did turn out a little bit more okay. It gave me a decent flame design, but it was more of like an organic, very homemade painted looking flame design. So earlier today, 
day, I was like, all right, I'm gonna give this one more shot. So I layered on a ton of bleach at the very top of the black skirt because that's where I want that sort of like design transition to happen, hoping that it would lighten a little bit more. And it looks like that it is doing that. I also added a little bit more bleach to the bottom of the shirt as well. And because I liked how the paint effect happened the first time where I kind of put it on with the fabric softener and then washed it out, I did the same thing again. This time, much less careful. I just piled on that paint mixed with fabric softener and like just put it in the fabric and basically that catches us up to where we are now <laughs> i am going to let that dry for a little bit and then wash it out and like basically just see what happens my current plan is to once that's dry go back in with actual paint and try to paint on a little bit more of the effect mostly with white so that i can get more of that like hard white line use a little bit less fabric softener in the ratio so that i get more of like an opaque color so uh, long story short this is going really really well i'm sorry i feel like this video is going to be garbage but listen most of the projects that i make on this channel work out so i feel like if there's one that's just chaos and like really really trash you know it's gonna be a teachable moment for all of us and that's okay <laughs> so folks i'm not gonna lie at this point next i needed a win so the next design that i tackled was that sort of celestial looking skirt whenever i tested that fabric it reacted very much the way that i'm used to bleach reacting to like a cotton fabric because i've never done this before but i have like bleach tie dyed clothing before and historically it lifts a lot faster almost like immediately on contact and it lifts to almost the brightest level if you like really put on a healthy amount out of bleach. So since I knew the skirt design would probably work out, I did a much more detailed design. And I had a lot more fun with this one because I actually could paint a design onto the skirt. And I am gonna have to alter the skirt so that it actually fits me again, but that's okay. I finally have a new sewing machine. But I really, really enjoy how this one came out. Um, it's nice to actually practice the technique as it was intended instead of having a dumpster fire like I have had with the other pieces that I've attempted in this video. We love the occasional win whenever you're just like really flying by the seat of your pants, don't we? <laughs> and this brings us back to the eyeball blouse design. Like I said a little bit earlier, I was gonna go in and try to do another layer of bleach, but I think that this design is going to look the best if it's also like a little bit more graphic and a little bit sharper. Don't think I'm going to achieve that by doing another layer of bleach just because this particular fabric does bleed quite a bit. So instead what I did today was I went out and I purchased some just bright white fabric markers and I'm going to go over the existing design and fabric marker and then after that I'm going to see if it needs any color. I might leave it blank. I might add some color. I don't know. But I know that this is a uh, bleach painting video, or at least it was supposed to be, but I think bringing some paint into this equation is probably going to be the only thing that's going to save some of these designs. So I'm sorry. Um, as usual, I'm a multimedia artist. That's my excuse for this. All right, I have my white fabric marker and I'm a little nervous because I've never used this brand before, but I'm going to do a little test strip so that I don't ruin my beautiful shirt here. I'm pretty sure it's like a Posca where you do this. Yeah. Yeah. All right, moment of truth. I'm gonna move top to bottom so that I don't smudge this. Okay, pretty good so far. It is very opaque, which is what I was looking for. Add some little veins. If you have an eyeball shirt, it has to be at least a little bit disturbing. It's my opinion at least. Yeah, look at that. I think that'll do just fine, so. So the next one I'm going to work on, and the last one that I'm actually going to attempt to do in bleach is the little moth design that I have here. This is one of the main reasons why I wanted to even try this. I've seen a lot of people do cute little moth designs with this technique, and I keep seeing shirts that look like this on Pinterest, and I want one, but I do try to thrift most of the stuff that I wear. If you know artists who did designs, who are selling these designs, though, please tell me in the comments, because I do like to also support artists. But as you can see, this one takes bleach like 
okay, maybe not as light as I would like, but this is probably only like one round of lightening. So I'm gonna do this and then try to let it develop in the sun a little bit and hope that that lightens it as much as I need to lighten it. I'm nervous because I don't want to ruin any of these, but uh, let's see how this goes. <laughs> So going into this last design, things were going better because the fabric itself didn't bleed as much. It was taking the bleach a good bit better than some of the other fabrics that I was using, but I was a little bit disappointed because by the time I started working on this one, it had already gotten dark. And I noticed that whenever I set the flame designs out to dry, at least I thought at the time that the sun was helping the bleach process to lighten a lot more and a lot faster than it was before. However, as I was working on it, I was like, wait a second, it was like a hundred degrees out today it was probably just that it was super hot out it was probably that reaction making the bleach lighten so much faster and then I was like oh yeah whenever I bleach my hair Brad Mondo tells me to put my hair in foils so that the process is more insulated and the heat retains as the bleach is lightening so for the moth shirt I was like you know why not just break out my trusty heat gun and see if that helps things to lighten more and faster. I did, and lo and behold, oh my gosh, suddenly my design lightened so much more. I was finally able to achieve the type of lift that I was looking for all along. Like I said earlier, I did very little research into why this works, how it works. All I know is that like cotton fabric is the way to go because it's a natural fiber and that certain types of cotton, even though it's, you know, essentially the same material, some lighten easier than others and more than others. So with this newfound revelation, I was able to get like so much more variation in the types of colors in the dye and so much more detail. I, I was loving it. The final design turned out so much better than any of the other stuff that I did. And I didn't even have to break out a fabric paint marker to be able to get that bright white that I was looking for all along. I don't know, I'm just very excited about this revelation because it took what was kind of a mediocre looking result to something that I am actually very, very happy with. Like, this is what I see on the internet. This is what I was looking to do this week and I was <laughs> like so sad and disappointed before I started working on this one because I felt like everything else I did was just mediocre. I mean, I like how the eyeball shirt came out, but it wasn't completely bleach. I had to go and grab a paint marker to actually get it to look the way that I wanted, but I was actually able to get a good result. I'm so excited. So with the revelation of this moth shirt, I was like, maybe I should go back to the flame design and actually try to get the skirt to lighten a little bit more because even after all of the process, that I had done it still wasn't as light as I wanted it to be to be able to like match the shirt so I did the same exact thing with the flame skirt I just like hulked on the bleach and then ran my heat gun over it for like five minutes and this it worked the same thing happened it lightened pretty much as much as I wanted it to and also with the chaos that I did with the uh, paint and fabric softener combination, it actually gave it a super interesting wash in the end. And I'm honestly, I'm just thrilled. Like I tried it on a second ago and I absolutely love it, which is blowing my mind because earlier this week, whenever I <laughs> did the first dye process, I was like, this is some hot garbage. And I would feel really bad putting this on the internet with my name on it. But now I'm like, I don't know how, but I, I actually love it. It's something I'll wear, so. Yikes. Basically, the last thing that I have to do tonight is do some alterations on this skirt and maybe this skirt and then just put everything through the washing machine so that I can actually do the reveal tomorrow. So let's see if I can figure out how to use this and get everything finished up.
Hello there, and thank you so much for watching. I know that this was a lighter video this week and somehow less planned out than usual, which is frankly impressive. My videos are never planned out usually. I still hope you had a good time hanging out and I hope you learned something about bleach and what you should and shouldn't do with it. Did I learn that? No, 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 I didn't. If I've learned anything, it's that I should be putting bleach on more places. All jokes aside, as a quick wrap up, I am thrilled with all of the items. I love them. I'm very surprised by how well they came out. I will certainly wear them. Just wearing them in the reveal, they already feel good. They're comfortable for the summertime, which is what I'm looking for. The only one that I am even the least bit disappointed in is of course the eyeball shirt because that fabric marker just really didn't at all do what it was supposed to do, which is extremely frustrating because at this point I feel like I wasted about six or seven dollars to buy two fabric markers for that that ultimately just completely washed out. It doesn't look bad. It just looks a lot more, you know, homemade and more subtle than I would have liked. And I can always get another fabric marker and a brand that's a little bit more washable and go back over it. I'm just generally butthurt that I spent about two hours doing that and now I have to like redo it. It's not the end of the world, but it's just enough to get under my skin and make me like miffed a little bit. Yeah. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed. I want to do more experimental content like this because I keep seeing other creators that I follow try new things for the first time and I love doing that. So comment below if you want to see more highly experimental videos that may or may not work. Also comment below if you want to see me do more of this because I feel like with some of the techniques I discovered in this video, I can like maybe go a little bit further and make some really cool stuff. I think maybe doing this for a couple of my fall wardrobe pieces would be a good idea. I mean, these are Halloween colors if I have ever seen them, so I think it lends itself to the typical bleaching process. But anyways, let me know. Also, let me know if you wanna see me paint on some stuff that I didn't get to in this video. I'm very sorry about that, but like, I just, I really didn't have the time, but I think that that's its own topic anyways. But I do have a couple of pieces that are just begging for some paint. So regardless of whether or not you want to see that, it's probably going to happen anyway. <laughs> yeah, like I said, thank you so much for watching. I love that you were here for me today. You look gorgeous. But as always, the most gorgeous among you are my patrons and especially my executive producers. Rose Draconi. Ira, Danny Tanga, Rose Kofrick, Freedom and Gus Gus, Francesca Sliwa, Small Creeper, Meg Lynch, Cat, Dodo, Zyle S, Shay Lee, Gray, The Cat's Bark, Alwyn Hayes, Thea Maia, Ruled by Pluto, Agent Sketchy, Wolven underscore Arts, Corvid Dome, Lovisa, Eloquent Silence, In the Galaxy, Eno Sign, Meeks Hunter, Megan Penland, India Gloom, Hypnos, Reflings, Katie, Michael Twycross, Sweet Winter Garden, Gravity Drop, Bobo McFoe, Will Schmidt, and Bean the Bread. If you would like to become a patron and gain access to exclusive behind the scenes content on my videos, the link will be in the description.